What's up guys? Welcome back to episode 6 of Pete's Basement. Before we even get started, I want to give a big shout out to all our fans, especially our boy Justin Cargood. You want a man dude, you introduced us to Prep Time Posse, who wrote us an absolutely glowing review yesterday. Man, I think I speak for us all when I say that that made my day. That was really mm -hmm. great. Um, you know, you guys are the best, man. We do, we do this for you guys and we have a lot of fun doing it. You guys on the MySpace page for leaving us comments and cool videos and shit. That was great. Keep that up. And when you see us writing back to you, when you send us messages, that's one of us sending you back a message. When we sign that, that's us. So, you know, you keep writing. We will definitely keep writing you back. You guys are the best, man. It, it, it still amazes us that you people watch this shit, man. It's great. And we love every minute of it. And allow me to reiterate, no bukkake, no porn, please. Just comments and happy goodness on MySpace. Right. Yeah. No goats, no trannies. We're straight. We're good. We're fantastic without it. And I just uh, thought we had to get that the, off. Yeah, that was good. That was Fl flooded I wanted, officially open. <laughs> yeah. I, I do want to say. On record, I asked for none of it. I do want to say that, uh, unfortunately, through my fucking hellish work week this week, I did not get a chance to go to the comic book store, so it's kind of up to you guys, but I do, I am going to get there as soon as I can get you motherfuckers the fuck out of my house. And tune in next week for Steve's basement, because he's carrying the weight this yes. time. Yeah. So, uh, let's get to our first right. comic. And what are we starting off with this week? We are going right into DC with Booster Gold. What did you guys think of Booster Gold? Because uh, uh, I've been actually following it. It was a Jeff Johns book. He's got this uh, co-writer, Jeff Katz, who apparently does a decent job. But the artwork is... Eh. Uh, I didn't read it. I'm not going to read it. Or or pick it up. But I think the cover is really awesome with the whole Blue Beetle thing there. Yeah, and if cool. anybody notices on the bottom left hand corner, Cyclops makes an appearance <laughs> this time in Booster cover, Gold. In Booster Gold. Um, am I, I the only one who read this book this week? I think so. I think so. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's up to you, dude. I didn't get that. I didn't get to the comic book store yet. You I'm know, I'm going to say this. Not an integral issue in a lot of ways, although it does have, spoiler alert, the uh, return of uh, the original, not the original, but the Ted Cord Blue Beetle. Um, the artwork is Dan Jurgens, whose stuff at this point is starting to look a little bit dated, or a lot dated. Um, it's a lot of references to the last giant crossover, not the last, Jesus. Zero Hour. Was like Zero Hour, five. which is like a 12-year-old crossover. Um, so that's kind of cool. But otherwise, it's not, you know, it's not really that pressing of, a, you know, of an issue to have. Um, it's got a good ending, which ties so right into the final crisis. You know, yeah, a lot of OMAX. It ties right into the last crisis, and I guess it bridges into the next one. But again, you know, if you're going to skip an issue, this, this might be the one. Um... I will say this though, if anyone is following the series, I have a feeling that the, um, spoiler alert, the, the extra blue beetle shows up in this with the armor, who's all mm. fucking shiny and looks like a Marvel character. I'm reasonably certain he's he's a bad guy or a fucking traitor. But otherwise, wow. um, I kind of feel shafted on this issue, which is rare. I usually really fucking enjoy Booster Gold. Let's see, That's really good art though. But really good art? It's Ted, man. Dan Jurgens has been doing this shit since like the eighties. Wasn't he the guy that gave Superman the mullet? He gave Superman the mullet. Oh god. Uh, yeah. Mullet, so that, mullet. that's kind of his history. You know what I mean? That's, really that's, and an Afro, I think too. Yeah. Well, briefly had the Afro. That was like the seventies. The Afro mullet combo. Well, they were exploring Semitic roots. Right. You know what I mean? And that, that's really what brought it out. <laughs> um, so we got them underground. Now it's up to issue five, isn't right. it? Yeah. Now you you guys picked this up originally on my recommendation. I just thought it was. I haven't even read it yet. I'm waiting for the whole series to finish, or at least get close to finishing before I start. That's a good. I idea. just thought it was pretty cool because like all the covers connect, and you know I'm a dork for shit like that. I like poster stuff. So, uh, but there were you are quite displeased with it. There were two cool scenes. The rest was doo doo. Really? I, I like, like it. hot doo doo. I hot, like it. Steamy, Not even fucking shit. malarial doo doo. Doo -doo. Like flies, no. worms, it was just bad news. It's, it's um, reasserting that Batman's villains, rogues, whatever you wish to call them, kick ass. Um, they're sick, they're strong, they're powerful, they're demented. Great. Batman has one of the best rogues gallery shows in Spider-Man. You know, yeah. I, yeah. Comics you know I'll say that, but then, you know, they bring up okay. characters from fucking like Metropolis, you know, Intergang and all this shit, which is a Superman background. Um, Danny brought up the fact when we were talking about this, That's to create cool a fucking... Mm -hmm. You know, there's That's some cool, cool scenes in this. Yeah, there's some really cool scenes in it. Um, where they skin a guy alive and then they start piecing him back together. Is that why I was gonna make a comment on this panel yeah. alone, which with, with all the puzzle pieces? Yeah, and it's that was just a cool panel. But there's a Punisher villain called Jigsaw. So there's it's a like Punisher it's, villain, yeah. So yeah, you know, it's with all the thing. with all the puzzle pieces going around in the panels, and then this guy with the all stitched up, and he yeah. look, you know, it just reminds you of Jigsaw from the Punisher comics. Is that his name, End Piece? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> 
But I, this is the first issue I've read of the whole arc, and the beginning seemed pretty interesting or whatever, but like he said, after I saw that guy who looked like Jigsaw, then it started kind of... Falling off, Yeah, right? it started kind of yeah. falling off. That's that's kind of how I feel yeah. about it. It's, it's a decent concept. It's not really well written. Yeah. And spoiler alert, it, it looks like they might be bringing in a new spoiler. I see yeah. that every yeah. fucking panel is her puzzle piece missing, missing out of her face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. puzzle piece is missing out of her face, and then he introduced her. I got, you're really skilled. I got something special for you. Yeah, and he yeah. shows her a purple suit with a hood. Oh, it's just right. like, right. kind of like... <laughs> well, right, you know. exactly. You know, it's... It you could know. be spoiler, or he could, or it could be Prince's outfit that she's just lending. <laughs> he's just lending it to her. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this: there's, there's one badass scene where Joker shows out how just how fucking disturbed he is. Yeah, yeah. and I like so that. Awesome. I like that. that. Was pretty cool. cool. Frank Terry, the guy who's on this, was doing Wolverine for a while, if I'm right, and um, he's decent. I, you know, and Jim Calafiore, or however the fuck you pronounce his name. I, I, the artwork wasn't that good to me, but you know it was well written. It was decently yeah, written. Yeah, it, it was. And his Joker is genuinely fucking eerie. Yeah, that's look a great. At yeah. That's a great. Look so, look but you know, other than that, and Penguin was pretty cool in that issue too. Pe you know, I like yeah. how they remade Penguin into like the Godfather. Yeah, like, I, like I like how that he's that something too. like a, like a kingpin esque character. Like he's been like that, that for a few years, and I like and that Penguin. What I like that happen? take on him. I like that take on him much better than like you know making him the the, the sort of standard Batman psycho. I like that shit. Yeah. Um, closing out our, our DC this week is uh, Green Lantern Corpse. You know we've been talking your ear off about Green Lantern. Man, it doesn't seem like we can say enough. Uh, uh, I didn't read it yet, so fill me in. Uh, this is the last issue I'm going to pick up for a while. Really? Why? Um, they changed writers. They changed artists. Oh. You know, um, the the artwork is. I mean, it's just. App you know, maybe part of it is you know after coming off that post-coital fucking high of uh, of, of semester war, you know maybe it's it's just that. But you know, reading this, it was really disappointing, man. It's no. um, Ooh. I, I don't like, like the. Uh, you want to go outside and sumo? We can sumo, sumo motherfucker. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, um, it explained it. Well, Adam's best compliment is it doesn't suck. So, Ramo, why did you like it? Yeah, it finally explained what the hell Alpha Alpha Lance are in. Okay. Alpha Lantern is. They deserve their powers. They could, they could hot wire manhunters. They could drain power rings. They have um, batteries in them. Were these guys like dead that they brought back to life or something? No, no, no. The, the, no. the, the background, I think, was that these guys are Red like the Lanterns. Eternal Affairs. Yeah. For right, right. And they, they volunteer. It's supposed to be some sort of honor, but they, they basically cut them open, do this fucking horrible surgery. They're like manhunters. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like, they're like they're cyborg manhunter uh, Green Lantern. It's a cool concept. Um, I thought the right ones would be in their own series. Oh god, give another. You know what's coming. They'll have a spin-off by the end of the fucking year. Yeah, really. You know, the artwork. Um, I don't know what the fuck is this guy's name. You know, the artwork Sterling? is this guy's. No, is uh, who is it this week? No, Nelson. 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 Just Nelson. Great fucking name, Prince. Um, <laughs> this stuff looks like Mark Bright's old work. You know, I don't know if you guys have read older books. Mark Bright did a lot of books back in the nineties. It looks a lot like Mark Bright stuff, but not as polished. Um, the story yeah, it's is not polished. I agree with you on that. You know, it's yeah, it's really amateur art, and maybe they, you know, I, I don't mind that they're giving a guy a chance, but this is not the fucking way to do it. Um, and it's, you know, it's all you know, and the story is just a little more amateur. It's not you know, the whole product is being as polished as what we've been going into. Last arc was written by Peter Tomasi. I love his shit. Before that was Jeff Johns. This shit is kind of thin, man. You know, and they go to the end where there's like some fucking like bull dyke Amazon fucking bounty hunter party thing, and it's, you know, it's just it. It ain't as good as, it, as it's been. It's a real fucking letdown. You just sound bitter. Um, I'm a bitter little man. I'm a bitter, bitter, petty little man, and that that just that shit just is not good. So I'm gonna take a break from this book for a little bit, man. I'm, you know, until they get they get their shit back together. Green Lantern versus Alpha Lantern. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's getting a little fucking thin for me. So what about regular Green Lantern? You still gonna pick that one up? Goddamn yes. Okay. Because Jeff Johns is writing it, man. Um, no. And I only picked that up because it was crossing over into the <coughs> Sinestro Corps anyway, so... Well, I'll tell you something. While we're on the subject, real quick, of, of DC, they dropped news that um, Jeff Johns and Grant Morrison are doing the Final Crisis stuff. I think okay. they're babies. So does that mean it might be Well, they might have a baby, and it will be both deranged and sort of, like, hairy, from what I understand. Um, but uh, it's, it's going to be a good... Supposedly, they're the ones who are going to be uh, architecting the Final Crisis arc. Which means that it might not suck, right? Because um, Grant Morrison's out of his fucking mind. If Jeff Johns can can, he's had a banner fucking year. Grant Morrison might just kill all three of the big three. He would has his way. He was. He ever going to stop with these crossovers? Oh um, no! Big not as long as one. we morons keep buying them. Yeah. Um, Even though we bitch about them, we still. Yeah. Buy I was going to say. You'll note, by the way, we're not reviewing Countdown this week because. Uh, they shit in our mouth for the final time. I think it's fair to say. <laughs> They're no, uh, we're done. Uh, stupid. I, I got nothing for the day. I got nothing. I didn't even pick it up. I looked at it in the, on the rack and was like, 
this is sort of insulting to like us and to the dollar that I could spend on crack <laughs> and be much more gratified at this point. Um, you get a pack of peanut M&M's, but you're sitting pretty. Not as good as crack. Right? Yeah. No, I can't, you know, I have, this, this way ain't coming off with M&M's. Crack is the future. Gotcha. Diet yeah. and materials. My buddy went on an ecstasy and water diet. He used to run around the park and just drink water and take like three I used, weeks to eat. I used to got, like, seven down my pants on. I didn't need ecstasy. Right, nice, nice. Um, but... The, you'll be interested in this actually is that the next weekly that they're doing because DC just this is like this, thing is, now? this is the thing now to do a weekly serial the next weekly that they're doing is is called Trinity it's going to be Batman yeah. uh, Superman one or Batman Superman Wonder Woman uh, Mark Bagley's drawing it. it's it's going to be his premier title you just sold me uh, uh, you can actually check out on our MySpace page we got the Mark Bagley Big Three promo art up with Batman Superman and Wonder and Woman and it might not suck the, Kirk Busick is writing it the guy who does like Astro City and all those other okay. vintage ones right. um, and on top of that they're doing an issue zero to kick off this Final Crisis thing which is supposed to be they have the sketch artwork up online right. shit looks great cool um, could could pull DC out of out of the stinker which they're in now well, we'll keep our fingers crossed you know we're going to pick the shit up anyway just to review for you guys so I'm, I'm let's gonna, just hope it's good yeah, so issue zero I'm always like, yeah. Issue zero. Yeah. Just start with one. Just, yeah, no. It's not nineteen sixty-three, man. Well, the funny thing that goes with it is, is that zero is not even a number. It's a negative. It, it doesn't exist. It's it's not it's not it's matter cannot be created nor destroyed. Right. I mean, how do you like that? We're giving you science and math on this fucking show, huh? Oh, wait, wait, wait. You right. can eat my shit, Mr. Wizard. Maybe, maybe it's issue circle. <laughs> Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> <laughs> eat my shit, Bill Nye. Um, Beekman's world was awesome. Beekman and Beekman can eat my shit, too. Oh, my God. We're way, way on top of it. Way, way, way My way. shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to part two of Patience. Today we're going to talk about talking. I don't know about you, but if I'm paying more than $100 for a book, I'm not really going to trust anybody's grading. Unless, of course, it's a CGC book, but I don't deal with the CGC because I like to look through the books after I buy them. If you take a book out of its CGC encasing, it's not worth it anymore. It's totally worthless. So, overall, there's a lot of things you want to look for. First and foremost, what is the grade and why does it deserve the grade that this guy says it's getting? Ask the seller questions. Do not hesitate to write to them and ask them for high-resolution pictures if they don't already offer it in the item description. Don't, if the seller cannot provide you any kind of like high-res pictures, the comic's probably not worth what you're getting it. He might have overgraded it. Second of all, is the book intact? Are there any pages missing? Uh, did anybody cut out an ad page for some fucking 3D glasses or something and it affects the story? Me, personally, I will not buy a book unless it's intact. I, even if it's just an ad page, a double page ad, I don't care. I want the whole thing. Um, can the book be opened without it coming apart? That's, you know, really key. You don't want fucking, is the cover detached? Things like that. Now, I want to talk to you about a rare situation that happened to me that uh, if you're just learning about grading comic books and, you know, buying more expensive stuff, this is one of those rare and ideal situations that doesn't often present itself. It's like, you know. What happened was there was a book on my want list that I was just randomly searching for and I found two of them from the same seller, according to him it was the same grade and the same price, it was 320 bucks. Both in fair plus condition was a copy of Detective Comics number 168. First time the origin of the Joker has ever been told. Obviously I bought one of them. So I wrote to the guy, the pictures were pretty good, the guy's name was Harley Yi. Big Chinese dude, I know him from conventions, I've dealt with him before, I recognize the name on eBay. And you know, I wrote to the guy, there was a convention coming up in like two weeks. I said, you know, bro, I'm interested in one of these books, without a doubt, definitely. Uh, I don't know which one I want, and being that there's the same grade on both books, you know, I was wondering if I could come and see them, perhaps at the convention, if the auctions don't close. He wrote me back within a week, said, absolutely. So the convention came, I went there, and I said, hey, you know, I'm Pete DeLuca, wrote to you about the Detective 168, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Pulls the books out, and I took a look at them. One of them, for being in fair grade, was real nice. Cover, as you just saw, was nice and black. There was no creases, really. The only problem was the cover was detached. But everything was intact. It opened real nice. None of the pages were crinkly. The other one, for being in fair condition, uh, there was colored touch-ups, and it looked like it might have been water-stained, the cover was intact, but when you opened it up, it kind of felt like that. So I really wasn't too happy with that book. 
but again, now this is the same grade for the other book, but because the cover was detached, the inside was a lot nicer. This one, the cover is detached, well, uh, cover is attached rather than it's got water stains. 320 bucks for both of them. I went with the detached cover just because it looked nicer and it opened better. Like I said, I want to read the book. I want to enjoy it. So, you know, this, this was a rare occasion, but the point of the matter is, do not hesitate to write to the guy and say, yo, can I see the book? If there happens to be a convention coming up, ask me if he's going to be there. Maybe you want to meet up there. Maybe you know the seller from conventions. That's really helpful. This, you know, like I said, this was a rare occasion where I could meet the guy. Um, if meeting the guy is out of the question, which most of the time dealing with eBay, the guy could be in Saskatchewan and you're in Florida. Who knows? Write to the guy and ask them for the high-res scans. If they cannot provide them for you, you are taking a chance of buying that book. All you're looking at is maybe a picture like this and, you know, the guy don't know how to scan or he ain't got a scanner or whatever. It's up to you. I don't know, but like I said, I don't want to pay $100 or more for a book unless I know exactly what I'm getting. And before I go, I want to give a nice big shout out to Punk Funkin' Junk for writing to me on PeachBasement.com and giving me a few eBay tips. And what Punk said was, always check for like misspelling. Remember last week I told you about not putting that dash in and everything and making sure you know, your, your categories were down and making sure what you wrote wasn't too specific? Well, Punk said, try out some misspellings. He said he found a guy who wrote an Amazing Spider-Man, I think it was like 35 or whatever, and he wrote it A-M-Z-S-P-D-R-M-A-N. He abbreviated it, because obviously he didn't know shit about eBay. That's what I'm talking about. You could wind up with a real gem, because the guy don't know nothing about what he's got. And he got a set for like something like $30. So every now and then, put in a misspelled word, see what you come up with. He also said, look for books specifically ending on holidays, because not a lot of people are going to be sitting on eBay or on the internet during the holiday time. They're sitting with their families, fucking wishing they could go on eBay. He also said, if you got like an iPhone or something, you can go online right there. You're sitting there at dinner like, mm, whatever. Kids play Game Boy, why can't you play eBay? So, I want to really thank him for that. That was a great, great tip, and uh, I'm going to try that definitely, and I'll keep you posted on what, what uh, transpires out of that. This is going to be my last eBay segment for a little while. I'm going on hiatus because I'm saving my money for the New York Comic Con coming in April. April 18th to the 20th. Maybe we'll see you there. We'll definitely be there. So, uh, that's about it for Pete's eBay segments. We'll see you guys come April. Look for us at the Comic Con. And we're going to spend a lot of money. <laughs> Alright boys, so tell me about X-Force. Um... It's back. Your man Cyclops. It's back. It is back. Um, they, you know what? This is a successful continuation of Messiah Complex. You know, I'm gonna say this: whoever's in charge of the editorial for um, the Xbox really got this shit together. They're actually successfully launching off really good titles off this crossover, right. which you don't see yeah. much anymore. Usually, they just let it fall to the side. Or, you know, um, this is a book to watch. Um, the writing's so-so. The artwork is fucking phenomenal, right. man. Um, uh, who, yeah. have, who is this guy? It's Craig it's something Yost? Craig Yost? Craig, Craig, Clayton Crane. Is the, is the, okay, yeah, Cra Cra Chris Clayton Yost. Clayton Crane. And Chris Yost is the writer along with Craig Kyle. Um, the writing is Way so, too many so. fucking C's. You know what, dude? I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of CKs in this shit. Yeah, what the fuck? I don't know, that's a little... They got Our brains are like this big from reading comics for this long, man. You can't do that shit. I can barely read anymore. Um, Alright. The old work looks Jesus. like, you know, it, for anybody who's ever read Heavy Metal or any of those other comic books or, or um, anthologies, this shit, it, it looks right up there with, like, the top European, like, handcrafted, great fucking artwork. Right. Um, it's really good. The colors are really nice, too, as well. It pops, it's awesome. and, and it looks hand-painted. It may be, mm. you know, CG, but it, it just looks great. But, right. you know, tell me, what do you guys think but of the story? You're well, much more X. I haven't read Messiah Complex, and for somebody who hasn't read it, I picked this one up, and I was reading it earlier today, and hey, it filled me in on what's basically what happened in Messiah it's Complex. So it was pretty yeah, good. It is, yeah. And for a first issue, it was pretty good. Wolverine is badass. Cyclops right. is badass. Right. Even freaking Warpath is badass. I liked Warpath and Messiah Complex. I've never been on so, No, I, I like him. Really, I care less about really I always felt like he was like a cheap suck Colossus or some shit. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Then they gave him knives. You know, but he cut. I think it's a thin, thin concept just getting all the bad motherfuckers and the X right. into yeah. one book. Right. Um, I'm interested in two things: if they can make the storylines good, and if they can deliver this shit in a timely fashion. Because the artwork looks demanding as fuck. Well, yeah. what happens usually when they have a big arc like Messiah Complex or anything? 
the aftermath of those comics, they just kind of like you, like you said, just fall to the side. Yeah. yeah. But it seems at least for now that they're not doing that. I mean, yeah. Like you said, they, we'll they, see where it goes in four months from yeah. now. Just, and it has an awesome ending. I'm not going to yeah. spoil it for it, but it has yeah. an awesome yeah. ending. Not, yeah, the ending is good actually. Like I said, it surprised the shit out of me. I thought it was going to be a really, th you know, maybe it's just this thing stinks. The old Rob Liefeld legacy. I just really, ah. you know, I don't know, you know. I just keep thinking, I get flashbacks to his shitty covers. You know what true. I, I haven't read X Force since I was like in elementary school. And oh, when this no. was up, I was actually yeah. like, damn, this is really Mother good. God. <laughs> but yeah, no, this surprised the shit out of me. It was really good. Um, and what else came out? Uh, I have no, the stuff that came out last week, the, the X books that came out were also really good segues. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they could keep this up, man, they might actually get I might actually be reading yeah. X Men. Yeah, yeah, was, uh, yeah I might was, go back to X Men too, because I left X Men because I got too involved. Yeah, yeah, no, so but, I mean, this is a really good X Men Parkology was really good. I like X Parkology. That was a good title. I thought it, it hit all the good marks, and the right. art was fantastic. Yeah, that's every, right. every just remember that. it's the same. You know, just, After yeah. a while, it's true. You can only get so much. Okay. There's so the many colonoscopies you, you know can do. I mean? It's yeah. true. Um, uh, moving off of the X books, we come next? up on Nova, the annual Nova. for Nova, the fabulous first annual, the fabulous, fabulous first fabulous. annual. You know, I'm, this is something that uh, Brian Michael Bendis should learn from. This is how you put together an annual each year. Um, it complements wow. the current Annihilation Conquest storyline. Um, it complements it great, but it's not a necessary read to the rest right. of it. Standalone, I mean, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a great standalone story. It goes over this really sort of stylized origin Nova, um, you know, and, and then it jumps around to this really good imaginative story. You know, you don't need it for the Annihilation Conquest right. story, but it definitely is a nice little. You know, it's like Jimmy's on the Sunday, you know, or Jimmy's in your girl. You know, it's, it works real good in that way. Um, Artwork so so. Dan Abner writes a good story though, and he definitely has a good good handle on science fiction. But uh, Ramon was the one who recommended that I pick this up this week. I was yeah. gonna leave it dead. I was like, yeah, oh, this is the first uh, the first annihilation is set up Nova as the man, and this just continues it. Is he he is the man. No, th this is him having. Spoiler alert: Half this is a dream is a dream state. There's some badass fight scenes, but they don't actually happen. Happen, happen yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but. They are pretty fucking badass. Mm -hmm. um, and it, for anybody who enjoyed, you know, I'll tell you, for anybody who hasn't been reading the Green Lantern arcs but likes that type of like cosmic story with, you know, this this sort of this definitely plugs into that type of story. Yeah. I, I really almost wish Dan Abbott was writing Green Lantern Corps or one of those other books. I mean, he's got a really great feel for this stuff. So basically, Luke Cage almost smacks the shit out of Jessica Jones because she takes her his kid and herself over to Stark Tower after they get their asses whooped at um, Doctor Strange's place. And just she re she registers, you know. He's all anti-registration, and the first thing his wife does is just splits and signs up with Tony Stark and lives a good life up in the mansion. Um, super hotel. Once again, she, uh, um, Miss Marvel lets him go. Yeah. Yes. Well, right well, there's something with this. You know, this is this is. As you guys know, I'm very critical of Brian Michael Bendis. I really? Think he's very, I think he's hugely hit or miss. Hugely hit or miss. I miss. Him um, but I'm going to tell you what I like about this. <laughs> One is that with, with Bendis writing Mighty Avengers and New Avengers, the, all the characters have a consistent right. voice. They, you know, yeah. The storylines weave in and out really well. Um, and this is what he does best, which is just talking head stuff. There's no action in this issue. Just you know, There's absolutely no action. Right. Um, what you have here is possibly the most realistic argument between a man and a woman ever in comic books ever um mm -hmm. you know and yeah you're right ms marvel and them let him go once again yeah. you know once again they let him walk right um you know as far as this being a secret invasion tie-in i don't you know it's, it's not at all no. it's tenuous as no. at fucking best but it's just pretty small the artwork's pretty good mm -hmm. yeah you know what this reminded me of <coughs> actually completely is uh bendis's old title with jessica jones alias oh okay. yeah, yeah. Wow. you know the artwork everything reminded me of that um yeah, you're right. There's very, you know, there's very little development on other fronts. It's great if you like, if you're a fan of dialogue, this is an right. issue to pick up. Aside from Luke Cage accusing everyone of being a scroll, there's really no. Uh, yeah, no, there's really, but there's, there's really uh, no... a nice little hint in here if you take a look at a panel with uh, the Black Widow, where it's Wonder Man and Ares talking scrolls. Now yeah. what? I don't get it. And it turns around, and the last panel is just Black Widow kind of smirking. It looks pretty scrolly to me. Yeah, and and, yeah. and, and this I mean, is you know he got the Ms. Marvel suspicion. Right. right. And and I'm going to tell you something. This is what Brian Michael Bendis is doing very well, which is the Easter egg stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, planting some great Easter eggs. He's definitely building the suspense for this. And right. uh, you know, even even casual readers 
are now actually looking at this stuff and actually trying to pick out the little mm -hmm. syncrasies and shit. Making us paranoid. Yeah, That's and it, doing a very good job. I so, know, what if you might be a straw? I don't even really know. He's the one wearing glasses, I mean. No. I'm the one who you say this is a good sure. jumping point. For as far as it being, eh, that's a tough call. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a very tough call. That's the one thing Brian Michael Bettis fucks up on is he tends to write these things and then he, he writes There is no on, good jump on There's never point. necessarily a yeah. good jump on on point for a Brian Michael Bettis book. This is an okay one yeah. uh, because he, he's pretty explicit about what he's talking mm -hmm. about. Uh, mention of scrolls and all this other shit. So it doesn't suck and it gives yeah. a pretty good lay of the land as far as like what the difference is the new Avengers, the mighty Avengers. Yeah. So it's all right. Um, Maybe if you get the annual first and then pick this one. Yeah, up, but again, the annual just wraps right. up that's the last storyline. Yeah. But that's yeah, an yeah, example. Of, of, yeah, that's yeah, that's an example of like the annual not being a really we good. You know, that, uh, being sort of like a really lousy way to. Yeah, uh, no, because you, you have to get the story. annual to. This would have been, been a better annual. I feel yeah. like I feel like this has been a standalone thing. Yeah, you know, it's a standalone issue. It's not really crushing on the main fucking storyline. This should have been the fucking annual. But you know, whatever. You know, I'll leave it at that. The art works very good, by the way. The art works actually really good, considering there's absolutely no fucking action in this. Right. So, but what does have a lot of action this week is Fantastic Four. Oh, the train, yeah, okay. Um, Back to the Future, Rick Well, well you know, I'll tell you something. Yeah. Ramon brought up a good point. Um, he read this and doesn't even remember anything really happened. <laughs> I read this a couple of days ago and I'm um, like, let me refresh my memory. You know, there's a reason for that. Um, very little fucking happens. Um, I, you you know, know, I said there was a lot of action in it. Well, there is visually. Th this is what I was going to say is that. Um, Visual action. I've got a theory since reading the Ultimates, and that is um, that Mark Miller's almost fucking peripheral to fucking Brian Hitch's artwork. Because there's yeah. a lot of action, per se, like there's a lot of action sequences, a lot of fucking gorgeous artwork, but very little actually fucking Not happens. a lot of substance to it. No, there's a lot of wow moments, just yeah. because Brian, Brian Hitch can draw the fuck out of a page. Yeah. Um, but as far as actual development, as far as actual, like, you know, it's it. this is... This is like, yeah. you know, it's the start of the story. It's a good jump on. It's a good jump on. It is a very right. good jump on. And I would definitely say this is this is possibly yeah. one of those beautiful fucking things being put out right now. And Mark Miller has, has always got some really good, big, imaginative ideas. I don't oh, always love his stuff. And this one, yeah. Um, so and, just hold and out and it should. Uh, yeah, it I, should think pick is, I think this is a great jump on point. I think it's a great jump on point. Mark Miller was my first question. It's a jump on point. It's a great jump on point. It is absolutely. You know, Mark Miller's got a great handle on these characters. He's the one who, um, along with Brian Bendis, did the jump off for the ultimate uh, version of these guys. Mm -hmm. I think he's got Mark Miller's got a great handle on these characters. Each character's got their own voice. Yeah. It's very fucking. I strong. like how he draws them older here. You know, yes, as they should absolutely. Be. Yeah. And Brian, I mean, like I said, Brian Hitch. I remember his shit when he used to ink like UK comics, and his style was just right off. Like you just bite fucking Alan Davis's style. And his shit is just developed and refined, and now he has far surpassed, like I would say, 95% of the artists out there. Again, my, my problem with this is, can they get it out in a timely fashion? Is the storyline going to develop well? Is Mark Miller going to do his typical sort of like really cynical fuck you, mm. you know, which is his standard twist to these things. Is he's got a very cynical sort of style to this shit. Mm. To anyone who's read any of his other books out there, should know that, you know, it, it, this would be a very inappropriate book to bring that twist to, I feel. But otherwise, yo, it, it, it's, it's a great jump on point, man. How long have they had these new suits? I don't know. That's, another, that's another touch. It's a brand new it's thing. A, it's a brand new thing for this. Yeah. By the way, I think it's mad funny that uh, by the end of this thing, you find out that, the, the, you know, they always write Reed as though he was like a virgin before he banged the younger girl fucking, you know, Sue Storm. <laughs> Not this one. Not this one. Apparently, he, he had a sex life, which yeah. fucks me up. And, and the thing, He stretches everything. Well, and, 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 and the thing. Finally admitted. The thing actually picks up a broad in this one. And, and I find that just really alarming that there's a broad out there with such a sick fetish. She's not blind? A giant orange. Yeah, whatever happened to Alicia Masters? You know, blind broads can only go so far. That enhanced sense of touch shit is all bullshit. You know, <laughs> usually they just fumble around with it. They're afraid of the textures. They're like, what the fuck is this? What did you just leave on my dress? You know, it's, it doesn't work the way you want it to. Yeah, yeah. the history of this, I see. The only advantage you, you know, probably have is... You know, that is not going to last. One of those filthiest... Oh, so I'm going to go you, back you to You got this look on your face like you just ate chili. New Exiles. New <laughs> Exiles. Oh, it's, not, it's not working for me. I like the last... It's only issue, too. Is it really not working? It, it, yeah, no, it's yeah, not <laughs> working. Yeah, I agree with him. The fat guys are on the court. This is the last Exiles issue I'm going to pick up. <laughs> I, I agree. For those who don't know, the best chemistry for any TV show goes Italian fat guy, Italian fat guy. We're, we're messing with the chemistry this week. And if you don't like it, just call us. Just write us in. We're All right, right welcome we're back, Danny. Oh, yeah. oh, hey, yeah, you yeah, there, Danny. Thank you, thank We've you, spoiled thank the mix. He's not really fat, and he's not Italian, so he's... We're going to give him a plate of pasta, just, you know... To try to, yeah. We're going to try to husk him out a little bit. Right. Not yeah, really working. But, yeah. The venom wasn't working. Yeah, apparently. The sunglasses look like you should be playing. <laughs> but New Exiles blows. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's majorly. Uh, 
Chris Claremont. Why you keep buying it? That's what I'm you know, I, Chris Claremont. I mean, he's the guy who fucking made the X Men what they are. So yeah, you, you want to yeah. give him the benefit of the doubt, but this is just—it's retread fucking territory. It makes well, no goddamn well, sense. The guy about the sword series that we talked about, talked about before, spoke about before, I was bad. So that's why I don't even trust him anymore. Uh, you know, I think that was the Excalibur series, right? That's yeah, that's it was Excalibur. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but he I had a great was, run. Start all over again, but. It, I, you know, I, he had a great run with Excalibur doing these types of stories, and these are pretty much the same fucking characters. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, he, and he's got this really bizarre love affair with, with you know, using the exact same characters he's been with since 1976. Written, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, you know, it just has to stop. The formula's run its fucking course, man. Just move the fuck on. And what about X Factor? Good. Another one right after Messiah like Complex. Yeah. Oh, there's a that. scene in this that is bad as shit, and uh, it, it, there is, and this is a spoiler alert, where there's like about a hundred Madrox, you know, yeah. Madroxes starting Madrox. a fight. Yeah, they just bum rush the set, and they all have fucking Glocks with silences. Well, see, that's the main Madrox that should happen, like not just yeah. three, not just four, like a hundred and hundred. Yeah, it's duplicate, duplicate as much as it possibly can. Yeah, and it's fucking cool. Yeah. Like it, yeah. Yeah. Peter David's doing some cool shit with this, you know. The fact that these guys just literally bum rush the set and were all packing heat and were ready to kill everybody. It's a real fucking he's shit. Having a bad day, he just needs to beat to the shit out yeah, of everybody. Yeah, man. What is that? I mean, that's that's great. And and the thing is, though, the thing is interesting is there's like twelve different types of Madrox. They're going after around. the purifiers here. I see. Right. Yeah. 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 Some of them because because of, of the um, uh, Messiah Complex. Yeah. 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 Some of them went to the future and yeah. saw a horrible future, came back and they're now like badass yeah. and. They want to make it their business to stop the future. Like yeah. the other X Men books are, stop, are dealing with the present. They're going to deal with the future, and I like right. that. Yeah, and Peter David, as usual, writes oh, great. Yeah, he's and great. the artwork in this is really fucking good. This is and this, is, this, this is a this good jumping out. on point if you yeah. want to talk about it. Yeah, it is because Madrox is a character like like when you come into this, yeah. seeing like a dude who can clone himself a million times, all wearing a trench coat, with a fucking like literal army of gun packing clones of himself that he can order around to just blast anyone. They finally made him a cool character. That's right. Yeah. The only time I ever picked up an X Factor book was any time it crossed over with another major X title, like you know, Fatal actually, Attractions no. or something like that. I, go ahead. I have a question. What's the current X Factor team now? It's uh, Madrox, Strong Guy, stupid name. Which I had something to say. Well, Siren, Monet. Yeah, Monet. Like, but I don't even know if they have powers anymore. Monet's Monet's yeah, they do. Everybody Monet. has powers except for Richter. Okay, and Richter, who's another one. You know, th those are all. He's using it's a lot of names. like the, the original set minus yeah, a yeah. few people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, it, to be fair, Strong Guy, his original name was just Guido. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? It's, yeah. you know, he's it's, Italian. He's Italian. Is yeah. he really? Yeah, yes. He's, he's supposed Well, no, he's supposed to be a Jewish kid named Guido. There's a lot of us out there. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that. I did not know that. Yeah, it's Guido Steinberg. You never met him. You're bored. He is, man. He's a really strong guy. I'm a really strong guy in this. So maybe we should bring Strong Guy as the next guest to keep the whole fat Italian Skinny guy, fat guy. I would Rosenberg. try it. Yeah, Guido Rosenberg was his name. Oh, was it Rosenberg? Steinberg. Steinberg. I, you know, Steinberg. you're Steinberg. just a horrible race. Well, now that I think about it, now that I look at you, Adam, all you need is a little white patch, a little yeah, hair right there. You'll be strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you doing for Halloween this year? Are you asking me out? No. <laughs> are you probably good. listening, me, Pete? <laughs> What's up with Wolverine this week? Oh, that's good. He's going hunting. This is, is this a good jump on point? Because that yes. last yeah, fucking story was right terrible. That Romulus yeah. shit. Yeah. No, no. This. I, listen, I haven't picked up. Um, a Wolverine book since the very first series, which was uh, like fucking what's his name, Sal Buscema and fucking like Chris Claremont, mm -hmm. decades ago. Wow! And this shit actually made me want to come back. Really? Yeah. Gone is the fucking samurai huggy bear fucking bear. you know Wolverine who who you know rescues little girls and is, you know this is a bad motherfucker and they write him as a bad back motherfucker. To the old Wolverine. You put yeah. it best. He doesn't have the vagina built into his chest anymore. It's true. Yeah. They they excise the vagina that had been packed in his fucking clavicle and that shit is done uh, Jason Arrow, the guy who writes this also writes a really good crime book called um, Scout, for those who don't know over, it might be indie, no it's at DC um, <clears throat> he's got a good handle on writing badass stuff um, I have, you know, the setting in Afghanistan is a little chump to me. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, it feels a little too much like they're trying to. Too, uh, top uh, yeah, yeah, I took a look through this in, uh, before we started filming, and for anybody who doesn't know, and you sit there and it says 1928 or 21 or whatever, and you wonder why the fuck is Mystique here, uh, Ramon, would you care to explain that to the audience? Her ability to morph also refreshes her cells, so she's pretty old. I didn't know that. So I was wondering why the fuck she's still around. But yeah, that was a cool explanation, and I'll live with that. Yeah, yeah I don't, you know, I'm gonna give. My biggest fear is this: Jason Aaron is a good fucking writer. 
there's a, he reminds me of Brian Azzarello, the guy who does uh, right, um, who does hundred bullets. And what was that? Yeah. He did that Dark City Batman one, not Dark City. No, 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 Broken City. Broken, Broken City. City. But he also did um, Superman, and that was Crash and Burn. It was oh, he did fucking it more horrible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you got to pick and choose your subjects. And a lot of guys who write, you know, like crime stories and right. shit, like Brew Baker and fucking Greg Rucka and all these other. Sh- they don't translate There's a certain well kind of superhero yeah. that you should tackle. Superman's probably right. not one of them. No. Yeah. Batman this, and this is a good fit for this guy. Yeah. That's a different story. This guy, Jason Aaron, is a good fit for this book. I just looks you fucking know, sick, though. I can see The artwork is really, yeah. really nice yeah. in this one. Um, you know, I, I'm just hoping they don't, again, they don't give him enough, too much rope to hang himself with. So I'm, I'm definitely going to stick around for the next issue, at least, which is more than I can say for a Wolverine book for the past, like, you know, I've been reading Wolverine, years. and or, I always thought Origins was actually a better book than the standard series, at least over the course of, like, the past two years that it's been out. Um, I do want to say one thing. I want to go out on a limb here, and one of my favorite books that comes out every month has been Punisher Max, and if there's a fucking character that deserves his own Max line, it's Wolverine. What the yes. fuck is that? Yeah, gonna I, don't, I don't know why they haven't. I really don't. It's a good question. You know what? Part of it, I think, is that the, the drop in a Wolverine movie. They don't want to yeah. fuck it, you know. They don't want to turn don't it into like an R-rated R-rated property. R-rated. Although this book is so fucking close to it, yeah. seriously, I mean, really? Yeah, dude. Yeah. They, I mean, whether he does it or not, and this is a spoiler alert. Mm. He, they have him shake a little fucking girl or something yeah, like they have to shake, shake a woman in a burger. burger. <laughs> I mean, they straight up and down like yeah. have him just be like, you know, t- you know, tell me where this broad is, or you're gonna get it. You don't think he's gonna do yeah, it? Yeah, she gets it. Yeah, yeah bad. Nice. You know, he threatens a little fucking girl, a little kid in it with his yeah. claws, and he's like, I'll fuck So now, how up, awesome dude. would that be if they could actually show him fucking eviscerating somebody's if guts they out did, like they did in Punisher they, Max? If they did they should, they a fucking work. Max version of this book, it would end badly. You know, it would just end badly for all properties involved, man. Um, yeah, well, with the, with the movie out and the man. fucking power. It would be one issue, and it would literally be him, like, you know, like, you know. How about one shot? I'm going to go out and live here. And said that if they did an issue with him writing it, they would have to get like someone like Garth Ennis or someone who could write really yeah. horrible, horrible things, horrible fucking things, like him like killing someone through fisting. Garth you know Ennis what I mean? Is just amazing. horrible. Yeah, I mean, well, he, he does think we'll have to. He does universe. some sick shit with Punisher. So he could do both. Very true. Yeah. Right. Reed Richards. So. Oh no, man! I would say that this was a good a good week for books, though. And, and you know, in response to Danny, there's definitely a lot of good jump on points this week, man. Definitely a lot of good jump on points. Yeah. But uh, it's been a good week. I gotta get my ass to the comic book yeah. store. Yeah. Guys, get the fuck out of my house so I can leave. So thanks again for Danny for Pete. showing up. Yeah, yeah. Danny, thanks again, man. Hopefully you'll be back more frequently. Yeah. This has been Pete's Basement, That's episode six. probation lets me. <laughs> that ankle brace that chafed for all of them? Not really. Really? Because mine chafed a lot. And the restraining orders and the deprivera that they kept in Well, I use KY in. jelly in there to, you know, lube it up a little so it doesn't keep scraping on my ankle. Don't, 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 don't. I'm don't. trying to get the couch, so. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Um, the, the MySpace page. The MySpace yes. Page. Uh, yeah. Pete's Basement is uh, on MySpace at myspace.com slash Pete's Basement. Uh, you can check us out there or at Pete's Pete's basement. Basement.com. Pete's Basement.com. Drop and us some messages, man. We will get back to you. Drop us a line at what? Questions, Questions at, at Pete's Basement.com. Basement. It says it right there. Right on the button. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Um, well, and we will see them next week. Yeah. yeah. Ciao. I went to one of these places where they just bring chunks of meat to your table, sausage, lamb, like the big thing or like, like a mutton. Big... Almost, and it's just ridiculous. It's just costly. It's one price. It's like a buffet, and oh, it's a buffet of meat. Yeah, and I ate too much. I'm hungry. This is thoughtful, Pete. Studious comic book. Pete's not wearing any pants. That's why I never stand up. He's like Batman almost. Yeah, he, he should like be. Yeah, but I would like the idea like, like when the fuck did we get ice cream? Did you get ice cream? No, I'm sorry. Thanks <laughs> <laughs> wow. for watching, man. And uh, now we're gonna get to the comics. You guys are hammerheads, man. God, oh, like, it's gonna be like trannies fisting goats. And that's... <laughs> How do you like that? We're giving you science and math on this fucking show, huh? Oh, eat, wait, 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 wait. You can eat my shit, Mr. Wizard. <laughs> eat my shit, Bill Nye. Um, and Beepman can eat my shit, too. Oh, my God. We're getting way off topic. Wait, wait, wait. My shit. <laughs> Oh, the good. dog is pushing his way into the table, it's hurting my leg. Like, uh, is that a euphemism for you? No, it's really hurting my leg. <laughs> Pablo's uh, 75 pounds of muscle. <laughs> is Pablo a nickname for your body part or something? It is. That's 75 pounds of muscle, baby. <laughs> for what's the grade, and why does it deserve that grade? <laughs> the dog's like, right there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I love